Hi YouTube. Yes, um, today I want to talk about um, another vid another video that I watched earlier today. It was produced by the BBC, and it's a program called Ancient Voices. This program was about um, one of the oldest or the oldest skull, human skull, found in the Americas. It was found in uh, Brazil, uh, South Central Brazil, in an area called Serra de Capivera. Okay, so I, I apologize for if I mispronounced it. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> but either way, that's the part of Brazil that uh, the skull was found. It was of a, uh, they deduct that it was, the skull belonged to a 20 year old woman. And she, she might have been killed by something, you know. Um, but what, uh, they, they said the skull is about 11,500 years old. And you know what else you two, what they say about this, uh, this, uh, human skull? That, the uh, phenotype of the skull is that of a black woman. They they use the term they they do say Africa and they also say Australia. Um, the movie also talks about that you know it also shares with you know in particular East East Africa, the Indian Ocean, um, and the area around Australia and including Australia. But as we, you know, if you look at, uh, at a map and see what these people look like, they all have something in common. They're all a black skin race people and an ancient people. And uh, what was so interesting about this is, is the cause of the age of the skull. I don't know any other parts of the world um, how old you know, other continents' oldest uh, skull is. In Africa, they did find a skull, what they call Lucy, but Lucy turned out to be a, a, a chimp, and that, not, a, not a humanoid. And that was supposed to be, was that uh, over 100,000 years old? No, no 3.2 million years old, okay? And they're trying to pawn that off as being human. And, uh, even though they found out that it wasn't human, they didn't retract the information that was written in different textbooks. So everybody has this, you know, concept of, you know, we're coming from ape-like, uh, ape-like creatures, you know. So it, it's really something. Uh, what, what got me interested about it was that, well, at this time I'm doing a lot of, uh, a lot of searching, personal searching, and I want to try try to find out what's true. What's true in this world? I was born and raised in the U.S. I went to, you know, always went to public schools, and um, we have, you know, they they teach us to have a certain mindset, and the mindset like Christopher Columbus discovered America, and we don't really question it. And why we even have the, you know, why we even say that, who discovered it? And I see a lot of programs, you know, things that even address that. Well, who discovered it first? And it's really dismissing the people who were here before the Europeans came here, at least uh, the Spaniards. And, um, and I think that aspect is wrong, you know. You, you, the people here, it's like saying, who discovered Europe, you know. Who discovered um, China? I never hear it to that that degree, but to the Americas, it's such a frenzy. And I think with this Lucy, you know, no, I'm sorry, not Lucy. They, they, oh, they, 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 they called the the skull that they found in Brazil, Lucia. Um, it's and it's a, you know, I guess this Portuguese version of the word, you know, the name Lucy, referring to the Lucy skeleton that was found in uh, East Africa, okay, and um, I think 
the findings is very is, is very important. Even though she was found, um, the skull was found in uh, 1969, but the findings were published 20 years later. Okay, so that's telling too. How come they didn't publicize it um, in 1969? Well, we know that in 1969, that was one year after Martin Luther King was assassinated. Okay, so to have this, it wouldn't have been politically, uh, ex uh, you know, accepted by the mainstream white uh, world. Uh, at least in the United States, and to suggest then that the uh, earliest um, uh, immigrants to the Americas was actually an African-looking uh, race people, okay? So it's something, so, uh, so science is very political. Science holds back information when it's a public concern, you know, public opinion of concern, and I think that's what, you know, this Lucia skull was all about. But now, you know, it is published, the work. And the BBC did do a documentary about it. So what does this all mean for today? Well, for me, it's, 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 it's about paradigm shift. And I used that term before about paradigm. It's, a, it's like a, a, a filter, a lens of how we look at, at things, you know. It, it determines how we see things. And to hear about Lucia, that here she lived over 11,000 years ago, okay. And she her, hers wasn't the only skull found, okay. At her specific spot, hers was the only skeleton remain. But nearby her area were the others. It could have been maybe 40 other skeletons, and they all had the same type of features, you know. And so uh, this Lucia was not just a uh, an outlier, as they call in science, you know, just something in, 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 in an oddity of the time. No, her features were like other people of her day. And that they say, like, I uh, was a Christian, and I, 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 I read all of the 66 books in the Bible. And Genesis says, according to Genesis, that the, the Adam and Eve lived almost 6,000 years ago. So 6,000, you know, not quite 6,000 years. And then you have Lucia, who was well past 11,000 years ago. So I'm wondering what's going on. And for her to be clearly a, a black, a, a, a black face, you know, the, the features and everything, very African looking. They wanted it, the the movie, the uh, the movie that she is depicted in, not movie, documentary. They they um oh did I mention yeah, yes by the BBC um Ancient Voices. Now that documentary, the the person who found the skull, or at least the the anthropologist who discusses the skull, he's a, a Brazilian. His name is Walter Neves, Neves, N E V S V I T O R E S, and he works at the University of Sao Paulo, and that's in uh, southern Brazil. And uh, he has an article that discusses the skull. So any of you science people out there who um, like to read journals, science, scientific journals, okay, his work is in the P N A S that stands for the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the USA, and it was uh, print. It's in the December twentieth, two thousand five issue, and that's volume number one zero two, number fifty one, and it's pages one eight 
309 through 18314. Okay? So those who want to read the article in detail, you know, you know, do so. But I, I think this is very exciting because, you know, it, it doesn't matter what way someone is personally. But there are people out there who are in positions of power who do think it's something important. And they want to make black people in particular in North America to feel that they don't belong here in, in, the, in the Americas, that you, you were just brought here as slaves. And that's not all true. I, I was told, I, I want to research this also, that I, I heard that when the Spaniards came to the Americas in Central America, that they came upon uh, what they call Indians. And they, they said that there were people, black-skinned people, that, that lived there with them, you know, in, in this part of the world. And so, it, so it's, it's confirming about Lucia, that people like Lucia were even in the Americas before Columbus. So it's not like something that they were here thousands and thousands of years ago and then they disappeared. They were still here. Okay? So I think that's very telling and I think that's very empowering. So don't ever, black Americans, whether you, whatever what part of the Americas you live in, you know foreigner. You, you know, you're, you're here. And, um, so walk with confidence when you walk. And, um, also, I, I wonder where we're going. Where we're going in the Americas. And, um, I want us to stay strong and confident. And, um, I just feel that something, you know, Things are going on in America, and I want us to feel that, you know, we, we have a future. Okay? So, it, hmm, I, I kind of feel like, uh, lost, lost for words. But, again, it's like a paradigm shift for me, that, uh, for me, this is significant. And that is even challenging my, um, Christian beliefs to question whether the account of Genesis is really uh, history. Again, the, the Old Testament is, is, a, is a book that someone wrote down. And maybe for the people who wrote it, maybe that's their Genesis. But there might have been other Genesis stories going on, like with Lucia. She has a genesis also, so to speak. And her story is probably saying we were here many, many years ago. And more than just 6,000. So just imagine if Lucia has a genesis that's, that surpasses all other genesis stories. And I wonder, you know, like, like as I mentioned earlier, I went to public school here in, in the United States. And um, I was, you know, taught about the, what they call the pilgrims. And I took that history as my own history. <laughs> you know, you know, hope that, that, that they came to the new world and, you know, so like a religious thing. And they, you know, all the people that you see around you are all descendants. <laughs> of the pilgrim. That was my mentality. And that's what they want that's what this school wanted me to believe. And to find out many people came from all over the world. And they they they're not all from them. So also the point of that is that here yeah, that was a story of a particular genesis or beginning for a particular uh ethnic group that's now living in North America. Okay, and like I said, that I took it as my own history, not knowing. I didn't know who I was. And I'm still discovering who I am. So, reading 
the book of Genesis, that it too is someone's, someone else's story. And when I uh, was introduced to the Bible and I accepted as my own, you know, in my heart, that, you know, the same thing. But it's not necessarily my Genesis, my personal Genesis. So the point of that is that we are taught certain things and when it's just presented to us as a fact, you don't you don't really question it, and you just okay I okay I guess this this is um, addressing everybody here, but no, you have people who are in power, and these groups that are in power want you to think like them. That's the key thing. They want to indoctrinate you and make you think that you're one of them. When they have your mind and your menta your mentality, then they control you. If you think you're one of them, then you're not going to question when they come in to your community, your country, because you're so brainwashed to think that your history is their history, by you know. But actuality, it's 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 not. So you have a Genesis in the Bible that they say is um, not even yet six thousand years old. They talk about Adam and Eve. They talk about the, the serpent. They talk about all these weird things that go on. But is it really our history? Or is this a history that's just an encapsulated group and that they thought that everything, everything was part of them? In actuality, there are different things going on all over the world. And maybe it wasn't a, a global flood to the same extent that history wants you to believe. There might have been a big, big flood in all different, you know, different parts, but you might have had areas in the world that were spared the flood. Because it doesn't make sense, the, um, the, the genetic variability. If you have, you know, Shem, Hem, and Japheth, you know, three people, but yet you have was that four major races or something? No, if you got one race of people, then they should all be the same race. Some variation, you know, but not that, not this different. So this is, so this is really challenging a belief, belief system that I was, um, introduced to about, uh, uh, 30 years ago, you know, so, I want to find out more about this, uh, Lucia. I want to find out more about, uh, the Bible and Genesis and other cultures' Genesis stories. I want to research what they have in common and research, you know, how old they are and, and to find out more about myself. So th this is very important to me and, um, I guess my message here with uh, with you guys is that question everything, even <laughs> even what you call yourself. Question why uh, things are what they are, and um, it's going to be quite telling. So let me know what you think, and enjoy your evening. Take care. Bye bye.